Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm going to show you three powerful methods on how to brighten up shadows in Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer, and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, on a side note, yes, there was a terrorist attack yesterday in Vienna. As you can see, I'm safe. I'm well. I hope you are too. If you are in Vienna, stay at home today and tonight of course if you're anywhere else stay safe from the still ongoing pandemic we have new lockdowns right now I know it's not a good situation so we will get through it stay happy minded and I hope I can brighten up your day a little bit with my tutorials on live streams okay let's get started so we have again this picture that I showed you last time with I have to say my favorite model right now. I literally, really love her look. But as you can see, there's a little bit of shadow going on here and also down there. So how can we fix that? I want to show you some methods. So on another channel, I saw a method where you use the red channel here. So you click on that and then you would make a selection from that. So let's check up on that real quick. So we go load selection. So it selects basically the shadow areas and then we would invert that. And now what I want to do is to make a mask from that and actually put that onto a rectangle so we can actually see what is going on. I will make this rectangle pink. It's white now because we are still on that one channel. I want to reset that and then I want to put the mask on here. And you can see that, well, it does select the shadows, but it also selects the brighter areas here. So um, I think it's a bit much, to be honest. So I want to show you another method where you have a little bit more control maybe on what is going on. You can use this method. It's good, too. I'm not saying it's bad or anything, but I want to show you a different trick. And that is what I'm doing is let's create this rectangle again. So you start out by clicking on the rectangle down here and then you draw out a rectangle and you give it a fill color that is very intense like pink for example of course if your picture is mainly pink you want to choose a bright blue or a bright yellow or something that is very very obvious all right so the next step would be to create a group with that rectangle in there so control g and you have a group selected uh, with your rectangle in it and now what we are going to do is we click on this little cogwheel over here. It says blend ranges. This is a trick I have already shown. I'm going to show you again because it's really good. So let's click on that. And here we have the underlying composition ranges. So on the left side is the dark values. On the right side is the bright values, just like in a histogram. And now look what happens if I pull down the right side. I'm going to start to see my picture and by moving this around look at that I can very precisely define what kind of dark areas should be addressed by this and because we have this pink rectangle in it I have a really good idea what areas are actually addressed by this kind of mask I'm creating through this blend range option that I'm using right now and I would suggest you unhook this linear uh, checkbox down here and create a point here because then you can bend this like you can do with your curves and you can see that you can either go stronger or you can softer go softer and you can move this over here so you can very very precisely tune in what kind of areas you want to address by this so let's say we are happy with this let's move this actually over here because these are the midtones and maybe move this down a little bit so I have an adjustment like that set it up for your taste because photography is art so this depends on what you want to have as a result there is no technical right answer that a photo has to be like that it's about what you want to show in the picture right so now that we have created this what we will do is we will create a curve adjustment inside of that group and here is an important thing that you want to look out for. So if you create that curve adjustment right now and you move this around. So let's turn off the rectangle so we don't see it 
click on the checkbox here, you hide that. And now we move this around and you're like, well, nothing is happening. Olivio, your trick is not good. Uh, what the hell? Uh, well, the reason for that is because right now this curve adjustment is applied to the rectangle not to the picture beneath it because there is some image information inside of the group. So what we do here is that we delete the rectangle, boom, it's gone. And now you can see that our curve does actually have an effect and I can apply to the shadow areas. And the powerful thing here, and this is why I call this the three powerful tricks, is I can still go into my blend ranges and I can still adjust where this effect is uh, taking place. So you can see if I move this over here, you can see if I push this up, it's addressing more areas. If I push this down, it's addressing less areas and I can move this over to make it a little bit softer uh, like this, for example. So you have the full control over everything that is going on, right? Okay. So this is the first trick and this applies to all the shadows in our picture. So if you look down here, we turn it on and off, you see it applies to these areas also and also to the areas over at the tree. So basically everything has this kind of adjustment. And by the way, you can do multiple of these groups. So you can do a group for the darker shadows, you can do a group for the mid ranges, stuff like that. So you're really free in um, adjusting this. Now here comes into play the second trick that I wanna show you. So we have set this up right now. And what we can do also here is, for example, if you say we want to brighten this up in a certain way, as we have done with our curve so far, I want to limit this to a certain area. I don't want to have it the same way over all of the picture. So the second trick in here is that you click on your curve adjustment and you say layer invert. So now it's not applied to anything. And now what I can do is I take my brush and I set this to white and now I can basically paint in a mask here. So let's set this for example to opacity um, 30 and then make this hardness very low. Let's go, well we can actually let's set it to 0% right now. Um, let's make the size a little bit smaller and now I can say okay I want to paint this in here around this area but not the rest of the image. So let's have it here in that area. Um, let's see, does this work? Yes, you can see this actually is now applied to these areas and now I can still go in here and I can tune this uh, to be brighter or darker. So you can see this applies only to these areas but not to the rest of the face, not to the rest of these areas. So you can tune in uh, the face in a different brightness and for example the arm or the neck or the tree or whatever other area that is and the importance of that is because you of course want to guide the eye with the light and with the shadow and with the contrast and how you shape basically the picture through your editing so this is pretty important uh, to do that Another thing to keep into consideration here is that, of course, if you make areas brighter, they might be desaturated because there is less color in the shadows. So what you want to do is to warm these areas up a little bit or make them a little bit more saturated. You can do this with an HSL adjustment. Here you have saturation. You can also, and this is what I would prefer in that case because we're talking about a face, is to use vibrance in here, vibrance and saturation. And we also can of course use a little bit of white balance if you push this over to make it warmer. If you do that, this is the really important part here. If you do that, what you want to do is to pull all of that into a group before you paint on the mask. So this is uh, important to think about that. So uh, let's create a new curve inside of our group here. And then what I will do is to also make that its own group. So control G with the group selected. So we have this now. And now I can put a mask in here. And I know right now it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, so let's push this up here. And then we want to click the mask and invert the mask. 
uh, yes, layer invert. So you see the mask is black again. And now I can again go in here and paint onto these areas like so. As you can see, they are getting brighter. And now what I can also do is that I can create in here, for example, a vibrance adjustment. And this is also addressed by the mask. You can see if I pull this up, the cheek down here is getting a little bit warmer. You see? So you can warm this up a little bit, give it back its color, and you have a nice warm rosy cheek around that. All right. So here is another trick. And this is the third one, the third powerful trick. And um, personally, I'm a big fan of that. So we just create um, a pixel layer. We set it to soft light. And this, of course, as you know, is my dodge and burn trick. So what we're going to do is we create um, a simple brush here again low opacity low hardness and we open up this window so everything that's here in the middle at 50 percent luminosity is going to be neutral doesn't have an effect everything that's below that is making it darker and everything that's above it is making it brighter so now why do i like this method the reason why i like it is because now you can see I can go in here, I can paint over these areas and I can do it in a very specific way, you know. So I can very specifically say, well, I want to brighten up this area. But then, for example, I can say, yeah, but at the same time, I want to have a little bit more shadow um, down here, maybe to bring out the cheek to make it a little bit rounder. You can see how this shape is now uh, making this a lot rounder suddenly than before because before this was a flat area here and then I can shape it so this is round and this goes a little bit inside because we understand the surface by the brightness and darkness values that tell us uh, how the bend of the surface is. Now I'm not saying that we should make the cheek rounder here. What I'm saying is you can use it like that. You can shape your picture like that. And of course, uh, because this is just a pixel layer and I'm just using a brush, I can always go back on that. I can always go in here. And first of all, what I can do is I can paint over with a 50% gray. So I set it to neutral again and then uh, start to paint over it. But what I can also do, let's paint on this uh, a lot uh, too bright. Uh, like this. You can see that it also brightens up this area over here. I can now use an eraser uh, with, for example, a sharp edge if I want to, and I can just delete this here. So I can actually be very precise on where I want to have my brightness completely independent if there was a shadow before or not. So this is also what Dodge and Burn is about, that you can create your own highlights, your own shadows in these kind of areas. So that makes it very, very useful. And of course, and this is another benefit, this is also why it makes it so powerful, you can have as many pixel layers as you want. So you can make one just for the face or you can make one just for the cheeks and then you can make one just for the arms or for the hand or for the fingers or for whatever reason or area you want to have it and be really precise with that. And at the same time, it has the ease of understanding and the flow, the workflow of just using a brush to paint in where you want to have brighter areas and darker areas where you want to brighten up shadows or create shadows on your own to shape the surface or create highlights to shape the surface. So this is extremely powerful in that regard. OK, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial to show you these basics, these entry steps into how to brighten up shadows. Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.